Hi, we're Ellie and David, and we're overlanding across Europe and Central Asia in our Land Rover Defender, Yak. In this episode, we cross into Albania and meet up with some very special people for a few days. Stay tuned for some beautiful tracks and a tour of a vehicle that's been a big part of my life. I've had another puncture on the passenger rear tyre. I'm going to change to the spare, which has got a screw in it as well, so I'm going to use our puncture repair kit to fix this one up. Then we need to get that fixed tomorrow and the one that's got the puncture in it as well. And then we'll uh, hopefully get to our camp spot in maybe like an hour or so. It's just so hard to grip. Over the next two days, we hit the motorway and transited across Greece and then into Albania, where we met my parents for an emotional reunion in a lay-by in the middle of the night. So we crossed through to Albania yesterday evening. Um, it was fairly easy. Um, we decided to just keep on driving um, so we could meet my parents. And yeah, we turned up last night. We're in this lovely spot, just in a bend in the road. <laughs> Had trucks going past all night, so it wasn't, wasn't the quietest. But yeah, looking forward to having a few days with them. I think we're going to... Um, explore this lake a bit today, maybe do a bit of kayaking um, and then maybe do some tracks the next couple of days which would be good. So we Fair drove up, we drove down that one mm -hmm. down here to Bevel, and then we took that one. We met some Germans with a 110 back in Turkey and they recommended a couple of tracks for us in Albania so we're going to do one that goes from Librads up to uh, Shupenzo I think it is, so it could take a couple of days, but then we might cross into these mountains here as well. Yeah, I think we'll probably camp in the middle, won't we, to break it up a bit. Yeah, so we're going to look at the lake today, I think. Go for a swim maybe, David? Sounds good. This is the only reason we wanted to meet up with you, really. <laughs> yeah, we know. <laughs> We might see a bear. Hi, uh, I'm David, I'm Ellie's dad, and this is my 1989 Land Rover Defender. It started off as a turbo diesel for anyone who's interested in Land Rovers, and it's had a different engine fitted, which is a 300 TDI. Same engine as in Yak. Really, really good, tough, bulletproof engine. Um, we've had it for about 22 years, I think, so it's done. I think 333,000 miles in my ownership. It was 11 years old when I got it and it's 30, 30 something years old now, 33 years old I think. In the time that I've owned it, uh, we've pretty much rebuilt the whole thing. It's on a galvanised chassis and a galvanised bulkhead and anything that rusts is now galvanised, even the snorkel for wading through deep water and dusty conditions as well. It's got uh, mud terrains, beer Goodrich mud terrains, heavy duty suspension, uh, Bill Steins and Polly Bushes, and I don't want to get too Land Rover nerdy, so I'll stop talking about suspension there. Um, it's a, a station wagon, but we've taken the seats out when Ellie was little. It had uh, seats all round, it was a 12 seater. Now it's got things like a compressor under, under the seat here, so I can, I can uh, pump up my tyres or lower the pressures when it's really rough going. I've got my water here, um, I've got a Lifesaver jerry can that filters the water and then another NATO jerry can with the purified water in it. That's a kayak for getting out on the water. Um, up on the side here we've got traction boards for when you get stuck and they're really good if you're camping in a, a place that's not level. So they're bolted and locked on the side and then if you're very observant you might have noticed there's a, a roof tent up there. <laughs> which is a real old school one. It's called the Brown Church Overlander. And Brown Church make these legendary bulletproof roof racks, but they also make the tents. 
and we've got one of the last ones I think that's still going around the world um, we've probably slept in that in about 23 24 different countries so in terms of adventures this has been um, as far north as Iceland and we've been up to the Arctic Circle um, it's gone across Norway and up to the highest mountain in northern Europe Galdapigan it's gone down south into the Sahara right near the Moroccan Algerian border across the Atlas Mountains and had loads of very hot dry dusty adventures there I think the hottest temperature we got was 53 degrees C there's no air con so it's it's pretty brutal inside the Land Rover once the engine and the gearbox are hot um, coming around the back under here you won't be able to see it the camera might pick it up but we've got a long-range fuel tank um, so that feeds into the main fuel tank and that means that we can do in normal conditions unless it's really heavy off-roading we can do a thousand kilometers without refueling and we can fill up wherever the fuel is cheapest so um, we've just done a whole load of fuel in Slovenia because it was cheaper coming around the back of the Land Rover um, the big old BF Goodrich mud tyre is on a wheel hanger, a Mantec wheel hanger and the reason for that is it means the back door doesn't collapse, it doesn't destroy the hinges, it's a big heavy duty kind of bit of kit to make the wheel mounting much stronger. My own patented uh, <laughs> rear table with some sailing uh, stainless steel cable there so that folds down and then we use a Coleman stove which is the same Again, fairly bulletproof uh, petrol stove that Ellie and David use in Yak. And then if I'm in a hurry and want to cook quickly, I use a jet boil, which is brilliant, really, really fast and efficient. Um, essential bit of kit here from my friend Dylan. This is my <laughs> beer bottle opener, Land Rover logo, of course. And then in the back, I've got a bed platform. This lifts up so I can create a settee setup if I want to. I use kit bags rather than a drawer system because a drawer system, one, very expensive, two, very, very heavy. Um, so we just have kit bags. We know what's in each kit bag. And then we've got two waterproof uh, mattresses that we had custom made. And they fit inside the Land Rover. And they also fit inside the roof tent exactly. So we kind of measured them really carefully before we had them made. And then uh, every window's got the reflective um, kind of visor. Uh, blackout and then it's kind of curtain inside which is quite nice. A bit of a game changer for us we felt we were going soft but after 20 years of doing this we, we bought an ARB fridge and it's amazing how much you can get in there so I had to design my bed platform to fit around the fridge um, but it's really really efficient doesn't use a lot of electricity and you can get stacks of stuff in it so being able to have a cold drink and have dairy or meat apologies to all vegans but it's it's really really great having that there and when we get to really cold conditions, the one thing I haven't mentioned, I forgot to mention, is round under the driver's seat, uh, plumbed into the, the two diesel tanks. I just pull the seat out, something that's pretty unique to Land Rovers, you can just lift the seat out just like that. And we've got a, a diesel heater. So that is, I think it's five kilowatts, it's much more than we need but it makes the Land Rover like a sauna within about five seconds it's got a little digi con digital controller on the dashboard um, and again that's been really fantastic we've used that in the Outer Hebrides in Scotland a couple of months ago when it was well below zero and it that's an another one that you call a game changer three key bits of kit um, if you own a Land Rover and you do a lot of overlanding um, that can be really really useful sometimes called the Land Rover toolkit that and gaffer tape and cable ties you can pretty much fix anything there's no electronics on this Land Rover uh, my diesel pump is tuned up a bit to give me a bit more power and I've got an Ali Sport intercooler which gives me again a bit more power but apart from that it's pretty standard and then up on the roof you can probably just make out on the back of the roof rack there's a high lift jack you can use that as a winch if you're really really stuck you can use it to get rocks under your wheels if you get into some really precarious situations and then this is our on sweep, this is our, our toilet, <laughs> the shovel. Dig deep, do what you need to do and bury it and leave no trace. I do recommend ARB Aussie kit, it's really good for overlanding. I'm not sponsored by them, I just like their gear. So I've got their fridge, uh, their puncture repair kit, uh, I've got their compressor um, and tyre gauge and everything we've just been using on Yak and Moose, our Land Rover. Um, and the ARB awning is really really great it's great obviously for shade and it's good for when it's chucking it down with rain you can sit underneath and put your kit there 
and this is provided by my friend Rob Evolutionary 4x4 um, very kindly fitted and provided by him and then we've got the ARB awning room which gives us another option we don't use it very often but um, you can sit out at night um, it's got mozzie screens and then it's got zip down doors you can sleep in there if you want to but you can sit around and chat and it's even got uh, LED lighting so we run that off our twin battery system we've got a Bosch main battery for the engine and then we've got um, a banner leisure battery a deep cycle battery and we've got a T-Max uh, intelligent battery charging system so that's been brilliant because we can charge all our devices uh, recharge them uh, run the lights run the fridge and not start the engine for sort of 36 hours I guess before we need to start the engine again to charge the both the batteries but it just flicks over automatically so that's been really brilliant but I do recommend the ARB kit it's great stuff um, that's really difficult because we've been doing it for over 20 years we had uh, three older Land Rovers before we had this one we've had some amazing adventures with Ellie and Jack and Fleur our kids um, uh, Lindsay and I have done a few uh, sort of uh, just couples travels since uh, everyone's got older and Ellie's gone off on her own adventures with David um, but uh, I think the Atlas Mountains were pretty exciting in Morocco, driving through a sandstorm was pretty crazy and then at the other extreme uh, a storm with catabatic winds up in Iceland we were camped next to Vatnajökull which is the third largest ice cap in the world and in the evening the pressure difference between the volcanic rock and the ice means that these, these incredibly powerful winds rush off the ice cap and it was ripping down our roof tent. We had to throw Ellie and Jack and Fleur to friends who were in other Land Rovers, get the roof tent down quickly before it was shredded, um, and then uh, shelter in other people's Land Rovers. That was quite an exciting moment. Uh, we've been as far east as Ukraine and Romania and uh, taking a whole load of kit to support the Roma community. Uh, friends of ours, Daniel and Emma, out in Romania. That was great because we loaded the Land Rover up with useful stuff. And took it out to our friends and their uh, Christian charity project out in Romania so that was that was fantastic as well and closer to home um, we've done pretty much all of Europe um, yeah, the, the Balkans we've we've taken the Land Rover to Corsica and Sardinia uh, and amazing snorkeling there and wild camping spots but um, Scotland's pretty pretty cool and Wales is pretty amazing as well and uh, the Outer Hebrides I would recommend the stunning beaches absolutely Baltic waters when you go swimming but amazing place to take a Land Rover or any other overland vehicle um, because fuel is expensive and there's some amazing places in the British Isles as well. We've had a nice slow morning, it's been nice to have breakfast together. Uh, we're about to head off now and start this track. I, I don't think it's too extreme, it's kind of like a dirt track. Um, I think it starts climbing up into the mountains a bit more soon. Uh, it's about 20 kilometres long I think, so we'll probably stop somewhere in the middle uh, and camp. Were these outfits planned? <laughs> we haven't done any pre-flight checks. Smile. Our engine bay is a lot less pretty than David. <laughs> it's covered in dust from Kazakhstan. We good to go? been looking at a map kind of planning our next couple of days um, David and Lindsay are gonna head down south maybe tomorrow yeah um, and we're gonna head up north back home we're gonna go to the shops now and then find a place to camp tonight We 
we thought we'd take the chance while we were with my parents to do something a bit different and have a chat about our experiences over the years doing overland trips as a family. As a bit of context, my family's been Land Rover mad for decades and mum and dad were having adventures in their old series Land Rovers before I was even on the scene. Then when I came along and later my brother Jack and sister Fleur, we'd always make the most of the long summer holidays as mum and dad both worked in a school so had a decent amount of time off. We did a few trips across the Alps to Italy. Expeditions with a group of Land Rovers to Iceland and Norway. Morocco in 2015. And some adventures towards Eastern Europe, to name a few. I just thought I'd ask a couple of questions because obviously you guys have been uh, overlanding for your holidays for, I don't know, how long is it now? Probably quite a long time. 20 years yeah. plus. I think, yeah, the first really big one was Iceland, wasn't it? That was six Land Rovers. I think I was eight when we did that. Yeah, 2005. Yeah. Flair, our youngest, was two, wasn't she? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, kind of, what was that like travelling with children from such a young age up to kind of, you know, when they were 18? Um, much the same as it is now, probably. <laughs> just less nappies. <laughs> yeah. I think we kind of just got on with it. Yeah. Thinking about it, you know, we've got all our kit in the Land Rover now, and there are only two of us travelling on this trip. And we had five sleeping bags, five pillows, five yeah, lots of Yeah, I don't everything. really know how we all fit in there. <laughs> it, was pretty, it was pretty rammed. The back of the Land Rover was kind of floor to ceiling and we had um, dry bags on the roof rack, didn't we? Yeah. We even did it with kayaks one year and going across Europe to Italy and every time we stopped we had to padlock the kayaks to a, oh, a tree. Oh, so annoying. <laughs> And had was the prime seat the middle seat because you had the leg room? Oh, yeah, Put your legs on the cubby box. Yeah. Yeah. And did you get that as the oldest or did Jack get that as the yeah, biggest? Obviously, I was the oldest. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think growing up on some of the longer drives, I remember getting on each other's nerves a bit. But yeah, we've always got along pretty well. Like I can't remember really ever having any big problems. Um, yeah, we all love travelling. So. I mean, in such close proximity, if there is a problem, you've got to sort it out pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, and you usually do. I, th yeah. I think... One of the problems was probably where I was, and, and it was something that happened every year on one or two days where I just really wanted to get as far as we could get, and we'd keep on driving until it gets dark, and once it gets dark it's hard to find a spot to camp, and then you're cooking in the dark with the mozzies around you. Uh, we had one really notorious one on the Austrian-Italian border, didn't we, where we ended up, we, we looked and looked and we couldn't find anywhere and we just needed to sleep, so we ended up putting up a dome tent in a kind of brambly area next back, to a ditch. Back the Land Rover into the hedge, basically. Yeah. So you could be a little bit more organised in, OK, you know, how long is it going to take us to get to this place? Yeah. We'll try and get there before yeah. nightfall. And yeah. But, I mean, some of, the, some of the overlanding spots were amazing. I remember the Hornstrand here, which is northwest kind of fjordy area of Iceland. And we went off on a mini expedition, just our Land Rover, and we left the other four or five Land Rovers and that was that was amazing, wasn't it? Uh, just having beaches with the Arctic Ocean to ourselves was pretty amazing. Mm. That's kind of the start of it all, isn't it? So um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, after that, I think yeah, we that's... got the bug and yeah. yeah. No, I think it's definitely given me a taste for more kind of adventurous travel. Growing up doing this, um, there were never really like holidays. I guess we had like small holidays <laughs> within the trips, you know, where we'd stay for a couple of days at a campsite with a pool or something, but. Um, yeah, I think I just, I really enjoyed that kind of, yeah, sense of adventure. And actually meeting people, we haven't said it and it can sound corny, but it's absolutely true. We've met some really interesting mm. people on this trip. We've only, our trip will only be a month by the time we get home, not the seven months that Yak yeah. has done yeah. with Ellie and David, but we always meet interesting people who are really kind and hospitable. Mm. I, think, I think you do kind of look at reviews and get some simple but good kit so you need something good to cook on that's going to work and we found that our Coleman petrol stove is brilliant because you can get petrol anywhere um, what are you going to do about water are you going to buy it or are you going to filter it and we've got the Lifesaver jerry can which makes a big difference I mean, it's not cheap the Lifesaver but it's just an amazing bit of kit like being able to get water pretty much anywhere in the world 
Yeah. It's been really useful on this trip for us as well. And getting decent decent sleeping bags and things like that that you're only going to buy once and they're going to last you 20, 30 years, that sort of thing does make a difference. Yeah, I mean, you go on a trip and you realise, OK, we use this one with definite the need to, you know, keep that, you know, have that kind of thing with us. And actually, we didn't use this quite so much, so ditch that next time. You learn as you yeah. go along. I, I, like last, last yeah. summer, Dave and I, uh, we all went to Spain. Um, and, yeah, I made kind of some notes from that it was a bit of a trial run before the Central Asia trip um, just notes on things that we probably didn't need to bring as much and some things that ended up being really useful I think a lot of you know with van life and overlanders and Land Rovers it's really tempting to buy loads and loads of kit to bolt on what you really want is your vehicle to be reliable you want to know that you're you know you've changed all the oils and the tyres are okay and a lot of the basic stuff because a breakdown will wreck your trip so having the basic stuff sorted is important I think yeah I don't think you really need to travel far to have a, a really good overlanding experience. And we've, we've gone to Mid Wales, where there are certain spots where overlanding, overnight camping is tolerated. Just leave footprints, don't leave any litter. Cambrian Mountain. Yeah, respect it. Cambrian Mountain, some really lovely spots with lakes yeah. and mountain views. But, yeah. I think a highlight for me was probably Morocco. Was I 18? I just left um, school at that point. It was the summer before I went to university, and we drove over. Did we get the we got the ferry to Spain, didn't we, and then drove? Yeah, down through Spain. Spain was yeah. Spain was about forty seven degrees. It was really hot. Was no aircon in the Land Rover, so you get the heat from the engine, the heat from the gearbox, and it's way way hotter than outside. So it was over. It's in the fifties in the vehicle. So you, yeah. I think I drank thirteen liters of water on that. <laughs> on that day without at, going to the without loo, going to the loo. <laughs> yeah. 13 litres of water it was pretty yeah. intensely hot yeah. yeah I think I'd definitely recommend Morocco as an overland destination for anyone kind of from the UK because I feel like it's the most different place that's that kind of close to home like yeah. it's pretty doable in a few weeks really and yeah it's just so different culturally and you know Sahara Desert is amazing all the different landscapes yeah. yeah and then the west coast of Scotland is really lovely and uh, camping's legal there you can pitch up be respectful and have some amazing views across the locks and the coastline so I don't think you need to go far and the great thing about trying it out in the UK is if you've got um, breakdown cover you're, you're absolutely sorted if anything goes wrong you can get home safely which is a nice thing to do while you're you know trying out your kit and giving it a go you can't ask mum that mum can never decide <laughs> I'd, I'd love to do Trans-Africa. I lived in Nigeria as a boy and we've, we've all been out to Kenya. And, but uh, we all... Pan-American. Pan-American, yeah. yeah. Ship the Land Rovers out. It'd be amazing yeah. if we could do that together. I'm with Jack as well and in Wolf. We'll have to save for quite a few years, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that would be like the ultimate dream, I think. Yeah. Oh, I can feel something tickling. Eddie's got a little hitchhiker. It's that time again. David's hair grows back within about a week. Let's have a couple of days with Eddie's parents. Um, we're going our separate ways. I think they're going further down south to Albania, and we're working our way towards the Montenegro border today. And we'll probably cross over and maybe do another hour after that because it's, it's not too long a drive. And then uh, we'll see them in a couple of weeks anyway. Where are you off to next? Um, here at the moment and we're going to come down hopefully through the mountains down here and then we're going to head south which we're heading north aren't we mm -hmm. and we're going to come down through to Barat and then the canyon oh yeah Osumi okay. canyon yeah yeah it was really beautiful yeah, yeah looking forward to that and then we'll just head south see where we end up yeah cool I'm Mary Hannah and this is Andy and we have our Defender 110 Tango behind us. The Texan is cooking. 
I heard this horrible grinding noise, so something uh, in the back has gone. Thanks so much for watching and please subscribe if you enjoy our videos.